we're going to show you how to remove and replace a fuse box. Here we have your atypical fuse box assembly. Obviously they come in different shapes, different sizes, but the principles are all the same. When you look at this, you're thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to get through that? Well, the key is staying organized. Whatever you remove, you have to reinstall. And it's best to do it pin by pin or wire by wire, fuse by fuse. But let's look at a few shortcuts while we have this fuse box completely assembled. This is looking pretty ugly, don't you think? Swapping each wire in and out, trying to remember pin position. Well, check this out. And this is very common for a lot of the fuse boxes. And this will surprise you. If you separate the wires and take a closer look at the fuse box assembly, you'll see that the, this piece has two halves. And here's the locking feature. Essentially, you could separate these two pieces and only we have to replace half of it if that's the only half that's damaged. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Let's start separating this fuse box and let's start breaking it down so you can get a closer look at how easy it is to iron our fuse box. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate our halves because lucky for me, we didn't have all that damage. So I'm going to go into the fuse box with a larger pick, a little bit bigger than my dollar store screwdriver, but it comes in handy on larger terminals. So what I did, I took my larger pick and I went into the groove that separates these two fuse box halves, forced them apart, and now I'm going to slide them apart. Look at that. Now, look at the job. I just cut your R&R &R time down in half. If this was the only section that was damaged, you're going to swap this section and you'll be done in maybe 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's break it down and let's replace one half at a time. Now let's see what it's going to take to replace this section of the fuse box. Of course, I always want to mention that there are other pieces to a fuse box assembly, such as the lower cover and the upper cover. These easily snap into place and pop off just as easy. And you can tell here they have thumb holds, so you can get in there with your thumbs to release these levers from the fuse box assembly. So, took the covers off, glued the top cover, and now we're going to go after the relay section. I'm going to go in and replace the terminals going to this relay. I'm going to choose this one only for the simple reason I can get my fingers in it. So I'm going to go in, grab the relay, pop it out. Now I'm exposing the terminals from the front face. But let's take a look at the back side because that's where all the work is going to be. Remember in some of the previous chapters, we discussed removing and replacing terminals and that there's a primary and secondary locking tabs? No different with the fuse box. Here's a variety of the locking tabs, secondary, that you can have on a fuse box assembly. So these do need to be removed. Once they're removed, you can easily extract the terminal. To remove the terminal, it's the same as replacing a two cavity connector. You're going to choose your tooling. In this case, I'm going to select my dollar store screwdriver. I'm going to pick a wire and I'm going to twist it around my forefinger again to give me a little bit of pressure so that when I extract the terminal I could pop it out at the same time. I'm going to get inside the fuse box assembly, lift the locking tab, extract the terminal. Once the terminal is extracted it's very important that you reinstall it into your replacement assembly so you don't forget the pin position. It's really nice to keep them in the same orientation so that as you pull one wire out, you can replace it back into the same spot. Okay, we replaced the damage relay section. Now let's move on to the fuse section. The process is very similar, but I just want to point out some key elements when it comes to the fuse section. So I'm going to set this to the side. Again, organization is the key. Keeping these configured, keeping them orientated in the same positions they came out of, 
can be tricky. But if you go to our chapter on testing, you'll get a nice shortcut on how to keep these organized. One thing that I need to point out when you're extracting the power section of your fuse box, the bus bar. Let me see if I can get a nice shot for you here and give you better access to that. I'm going to peel the wires back and I'm going to try to expose this shiny piece of metal in here. Maybe you can see that? This is your bus bar. This is configured for this fuse box assembly. These bus bars do change configuration from time to time from fuse box to fuse box because some vehicle options require some power at some fuse locations and not on others depending on your vehicle options. So do be aware that when you're swapping over the power section of your fuse box, make sure that the bus bar is the same. If not, don't worry. This too can be extracted and replaced into the new housing that you receive from Aeromotive.